Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is introduction to IDEA. And in today's lesson, we'll be covering visualization. If you haven't checked out the previous seven lessons, I recommend that you check those out. So visualization is a brand new tool uh, within IDEA version 10. And I think it's a huge and really needed tool that auditors can really take advantage of and really do right out of the box with the IDEA. Uh, rather than going to an external tool, really integrated in. And I really think it's a really great first attempt to buy Caseware uh, on this visualization. There are some improvements and minor things that um, I think that can be improved on, but I think it's a really useful tool, even as is. So I uh, look forward to showing and demonstrating this to you guys. So we have Case Idea Caseware here uh, on the screen. And there's really two options here. You can do discover or visualize. So discover is a really, when I first saw it, I, was, I thought it was really exciting and and uh, I'll talk while it's loading. And I thought it was a really great tool. And essentially what it does is auto creates a dashboard uh, based off the data. And it does a lot of analysis on the existing data. So it does take a little bit of time. This is not a small data set. You see here 120,000 uh, records. Uh, like dozen columns or so uh, and there's quite a bit of uh, information uh, here and this is actually the city of Toronto uh, P card transaction data which I'll also include in the link the bit.ly link that you can see down below that you can check out and go ahead and download and uh, import it does take a little while to import not too long like when I say a little while obviously I'm um, uh, spoiled with time it takes like 15 to 20 seconds to to import as opposed to instantly uh, but again a really this is a really great option it is not perfect by by any means and i don't expect any auto visualization tool to be perfect uh, but it is really neat and handy so you can see it's it's completed and it's created these four different visualizations and created this one dashboard and a number of different kpis at the top uh, so we'll start at the top here and there's some modifications you can make. So here, it looks like what they're doing is they're doing a stratification of the original amount, uh, which is the original currency that the transaction's made in. So if they went in and traveled to the US, then it'd be in US dollars. Uh, there's another amount called transaction amount, which converts it all to Canadian, uh, which is actually what I would recommend using because you see here, there's a $97,000 transaction or 97,000 currency. Uh, whatever currency that is that may be for example it may be a little bit skewed if if uh they go to if they're using like colombian pesos for example or or uh japanese yen so instead of using amount uh we're going to use transaction amount you're going to say here it's going to be too many so we have to group them so we'll click on this stratify it's going to auto stratify it's going to create these buckets and then you'll see the red ones indicate where they've bucketed extremes. So you can see each bucket size is 50. And you'll see right away that majority of the transactions are between zero and $100. Uh, you can see here majority of the, um, I would guess more than 60, 70% of the transactions are between zero and $100, which actually puts even more emphasis on purchase card transactions are often very small dollar transactions, uh, but can be really abused. So I definitely recommend that you analyze those and check those out and then here you can change the title around obviously they're auto generating a title so you can say um histogram m of transaction amount and then you can see here how you can really create a nice transaction title so you can see up here we can just put dollar sign and then and here you can say uh number of transactions so you can see a really easy way to improve this chart really quickly uh really easily so you can see there now we have this nicely form formatted chart uh over here we can obviously go and do the same if we want to see the chart in a in a full screen you can click on this maximize it makes it even easier to identify you can take a screenshot to some analysis you can copy this to the clipboard paste this into a like a word document I'll show you where you did that actually. So you can see here, you can copy this into your working papers. Uh, use this as some some evidence of why why you decide to explore some areas. 
Oh, no, that's no. Okay, there you go. Uh, you can also then check it out here. They're doing a, like kind of like a bar, a column chart with uh, quarters. Uh, in here, in this case, I would have preferred them to say like Q1 2012 as opposed to right here at the full date, but still pretty handy. And you can see here, check out the analysis and really get an understanding of how you can see here the transactions are fairly consistent. Uh, quarter over quarter obviously it looks like q3 in each of the years are is a little bit higher than the rest which is interesting and an area that you might want to explore and then here they're doing a tree map uh based off of the original amount and the transaction record so you can here take a look here at the properties uh so you can see here the size is based off the number of transactions and you can see here the color is by the original amount so maybe for example you want to change that to transaction amount and maybe you want to change it in, instead of um instead of size you want it to be uh, uh by some instead of you want to do it by average you can see here presents a slightly different picture so you can see here that when the when they shop in the u.s or purchase in the u.s it's slightly higher transaction amount well it's even higher in great british pounds which um which could make sense and could not make sense but i think it's just a really interesting visual here and then here they're doing number of records uh by the original currency so really interesting here they're doing some kpis some really quick uh points so here the number of negative transaction records which is interesting like why do you have negative transaction records number of records with blank division so where did these costs end up allocating were these very large costs so if they were how do we know what they are so if you want to know what they are you just click and then uh it should pop up um okay um Okay, normally it would uh, pop up, but that's fine. Uh, so then here you'll have number of uh, blank elements. And you can see they really focus on things that the auditors really would think about. So for example, number of transactions on Sunday, uh, number of, of negative amounts by transaction amount, which obviously makes sense if this if these two numbers weren't the same, then it would look really suspicious. Uh, maybe you would have some faulty exchange rates. And then once you uh, have that saved, you can click on there and uh, I originally called it initial dashboard uh, previously so I'm just gonna save it there let's go ahead and close that let's give that a minute to, to reset so really interesting but if you want to take things in your own hand you can certainly do that you click on visualize and then once you click on visualize uh, you can create a new dashboard and then you have three options here. So no, four options. So you can either column, bar chart, pie chart, tree map. So we actually didn't see a, actually we did see a pie chart. That was the bottom right hand corner, but just to see what a pie chart would look like. For example, here it asks you to group by, you can put division and then ask you to, what do you want to sum by you can call it transaction amount and then take a look at which of, which of these amounts. So you can see here, uh, par parks, forestry and relations make up almost 50 percent of the p card transactions which is actually really interesting something to to look at you can again choose to show the legend or not show the legend and then as well you can change the the title so here you can call it pi chart by division we'll spend and then you can easily press save and then here i'll ask give you four different options show single chart show two charts so three show four it's four one is like the original um so you can click on here and then we can press select so now we have this chart which is interesting and then we can go ahead and okay, click on too many things at once let's go back to uh this chart and then now we can go ahead and create a new chart so here we can go uh, by merchant type description and let's do some of of amount so you can see here the different types again we can call this spend by merchant 
type again provides a lot of really good and quick easy insights talking about grocery stores talking about home supplies fines which is actually really interesting here like why are we paying so much in fines uh you can see here you can check it out here and get a really good understanding of why the merchant types are called or uh why we're paying fines so again something worth exploring really quick and easy way of identifying that so we're gonna go back to to the chart go back to the restore and then up here you can put in your kpi so for example uh let's say gl account i want to know the number of unique gl accounts so you can see here 947 different gl accounts which is really interesting uh and some really good statistics so you can also go here um original currency the number of unique original currencies or you can even go to for example the transaction date let's go earliest date i really like this one and then you can go uh, it's a really nice two version of it so here you can go earliest date and and latest date which actually provides a really good range and once you're happy with this chart this visualization you can go ahead and save it i'm going to call it updated chart so you can see here really neat and handy tool obviously there's some improvements that need to be made and some areas where for example they shouldn't allow overlaps they should allow side by side but obviously really i think a really great start and something that uh, I think I encourage Caseware and, and other analytics software to uh, to further explore. And they, they really take in, uh, in some interesting steps like that, discover uh, and really understanding and exploring your data, which actually provides some, a you can be surprised how, how much better understanding your data and doing visualization before you do your analysis can really improve your analytics. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.